Hi everyone, section 2, 2, example 9. So we're going to use the graph of f of x to graph the following functions. And just a nice little refresher of trig. Um, this is actually the curve for y equals sine x. But we can do these transformations even if we didn't know that. But we'll see trig a little bit later in the course. Um, so let's start with a. So a says y equals f of x plus 1. I'm going to copy the graph, and so we're going to shift it based on that plus 1. So plus 1 means we go up 1. So I'll just find a couple points and bring them up 1. So we'll start at the far left at negative pi, and we'll go up to 1. Um, negative pi over 2, we're at negative 1, so we'll go up to 0, up 1, up 1. Um, in the center, we're going to go up 1 to 1, up 1, up 1, and then we should see the exact same shape, just shifted up by 1. All right, B, we have y equals f of x minus pi over 2. So that's an inner move, which means... Um, it's horizontal, so we learn negative is shifting to the right, so we're going to shift to the right by pi over 2. So I'm going to copy the graph again. So for b, we're going to go to the right by pi over 2. So at negative pi, we're going to go over to ne negative pi over 2. At negative pi over 2, we're going to shift over to 0, right? Because negative pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 0. So every point just shifts over. So again, we're going to have the same curve, just slightly to the right. And that was a horizontal transformation. All right, so C, we have y equals um, f of negative x. So that's a reflection. Um, it'll be a reflection about the y-axis. The inner um, negative is the y-axis, basically like sideways. So this piece on the, on the right side will now be on the left side. We're reflecting about the y-axis, and then this bottom piece on the left is now on the right, because again, we're reflecting about the y-axis. And we get the same curve, but reflected. And our final one for part D is y equals 2 times f of x, which we learned multiplying those coefficients, just stretch it. So the 2 just stretches it vertically. So it's basically just going to be taller. So 0 stays 0, right? Because 0 times 2 is still 0. But um, the other points are going to get stretched. So when we go down to negative 1, now instead we'll go down to negative 2, because it's being stretched by 2. And then rather than going to 1, we'll go up to 2. So it'll just get taller. So it'll just be a stretched version of the curve. Cool, and that's example nine. Let's try example 10 to finish up the section. So now let's just describe a transformation in words and then graph. So let's describe it in words and then we'll graph it. So first I like to identify the parent function. So we have y equals three minus two square root of x minus one. So I think that square root is my function, right? So first we start with the parent function, which is y equals square root of x. So if I were to graph, as I graph this, that'll be step one. The square root of x just starts at zero and kind of slowly curves up. All right, and then we kind of work from the inside out. So I'm gonna start on the inside. So x minus one, we have a horizontal shift 
means we shift to the right by one. So that's how I'm, I'm describing the transformation in words. And so when we shift to the right by one, we'll just go over one. And so now we have the same curve just over to the right by one. And then let's continue to work our way out. So next I see a two on the outside. So that means it's gonna stretch. So it stretches vertically. And so we can just kind of approximate, but it just stretches. So think about like vertically pulling it. So as I pull the purple curve up, it gets taller. It's stretched. And then we see the negative sign out front. So what do negative signs on the outside do? Um, and so that'll be a reflection about the x-axis. Right, it flips upside down. So basically negatives on the inside go sideways, negatives on the outside go upside down. So we're gonna take that blue curve and just reflect it upside down. So same curve upside down. And then our final thing is the three. So the plus three or the three on the outside tells me to go up three. Let's get a new color. Um, we have it just so they're all different colors. So if you have the ch ability to, um, it's nice to do these in multiple colors. Keep track of all the transformations. So right now we're at zero, we go one, two, three. So that'll be kind of like where the curve starts. And it'll be that same upside down version, just starting at three. It's actually starting at one, three, right? It's the one was from the shifting over one, and then the three is from going up three. So if I wanted to describe this in a paragraph, just to kind of summarize, I'd say we start with the curve, y equals square root x, and then I'm gonna do the transformations in the order that I did them. So we shifted by one to the right, Make sure you say direction with a shift because we could go up, down, left, right. We stretched vertically by two. What else did we do? Um, we reflected upside down or about the x-axis. And then finally, we moved up three units. So that's how I would describe a transformation in words.